this hour, deep dives into the critical corners of the economy. The housing market still hot, but the CEO of Loan Depot warns of shrinking profit margins and lower volumes. We have an exclusive interview straight ahead. And shares of Loan Depot having a rough day after the nation's fifth largest retail mortgage lender reported weaker than expected earnings and revenue. A Loan Depot citing a number of headwinds to its business, including shrinking pop profit margins, increased competition, and lower refinancing volumes, and a low supply of homes for sale to boot. The good news is that mortgage transactions were up uh, for new purchases 87% year over year in its most recent quarter. Let's bring in Anthony Shea. He is the founder and CEO of Loan Depot. Mr. Shea, welcome. Uh, the stock today is uh, limping quite a bit. Uh, on your report, um, EPS 18 cents per share versus an estimate of 54 cents. Revenue 825 million versus a 975 million estimate. The comparables to the prior quarter and to the same quarter a year ago are not favorable generally. What has troubled the business? Well, Tyler, we just enjoyed arguably probably the best year the mortgage industry has ever seen, uh, which is 2020. Uh, our company earned $2 billion last year, and the industry had a terrific year. And what we're seeing today is overcapacity in the system, in our industry. As interest rates are rising, your origination volumes are lower. So the industry has excess capacity. So everyone is adjusting by fighting for additional market share, and which we've done. So along the way, you have compressed margins. We have increased, actually, our volume uh, year to day over last year by 110%. And we have increased our market share by well over 50%. So the stronger players are starting to amass market share and start to take this land grab. You know, keep in mind that financial crisis just happened 12, 13 years ago when Countrywide fell and vacated 22% market share. And the top three new lenders today are adding up to about the same market share. So it's still very early in the cycle. But this, uh, this, this happening and this development today in the market where margins are shrinking is well expected and forecasted. Market share up uh, to 3.3% from 2.3% uh, year over year. That's the good news. The bad news is profit margins shrinking. Why are the profit margins down? Is it because of competition? Is it because you're, you're not having as many originations in refinancings as you are on the, on the original purchase side? What is it? This happens every time uh, when origination volumes fall because you have lower capacity, the mortgage industry is still heavily inefficient. So there's a lot of labor. And right now you have too many people in the industry because last year we built it up to $4 trillion run rate, which is one of the best years in mortgage lending history. This year's forecasted to be down around 3 trillion, still a great year, historically speaking, but it's going to be 20 to 30% lower originations than last year. So you have a lot more bodies chasing lower originations and that puts pressure on margins. So uh, companies are cutting margins to try to amass market share. But the good news is this always happens. It's a temporary event. It's not sustainable. And those companies that amass market share when margins normalize will benefit. So what I'm hearing you say, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth uh, explicitly, what I'm hearing you say is that you're being punished uh, in the stock market uh, for failing to live up to what was by any stretch a truly extraordinary 2020. Do I have you right on that? Well, this is a long game. And certainly over the last couple of quarters, the entire industry has taken a backseat to earnings. But we have to understand that strategy here is going to be very important on the long run. And it's a long game because the total addressable market, Tyler, is $11 trillion. So this is a massive market. Disruption is happening in our marketplace. Barrier to entry is significant. So it's very difficult for new lenders to come up into a scaled and branded position. So we are very confident about the long game, but short term wise, there is competitive pressure and that's well expected. And uh, we certainly look forward to that challenge. And so, Anthony, part of the way that you are competing is by offering what I understand you're calling the Grand Slam package, a cash rebate of up to $7,000 by bundle services. Is that something that is attracting uh, some potential clients to your company? 
That's right. Part of the disruption, Courtney, is the fact that we're finding our customers now very early and the top of their customer buying journey, where before, before the internet, before digital disruption, a lender really is called into the game after a real estate agent says, hey, I have a buyer, now I need a loan. Where today, because of all the content and all of the wonderful listings that a consumer can see online and through their smartphone, they're contacting a branded company such as Loan Depot well ahead of time. So what this allows us to do is to intercept and to create different adjacent products and services. And, al and along that, along the way, we can bundle the service so that a customer no longer has to make eight purchase decisions. I mean, think about it. It's already stressful enough buying and selling a home, but you got to decide on who sells your home, who, who is representing you to buy it. And then you got to pick a lender. And then there's title insurance, closing services, mm -hmm. escrow homeowner's warranty, homeowner's inspection, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So if you can bundle it under a single branded approach, and by the way, we have the opportunity to make additional revenue. And as a, as a, as a result of that, we're, we're capable of rebating some of that revenue that we earn to our core customer by giving them up to a $7,000 rebate. That makes it just much easier for them and, and also puts them in a position where it makes it a little bit more affordable and they can use that $7,000 for moving costs, et cetera. Right. Let me, let me just uh, suggest this. You know, the, the stock market is an impatient beast and they want results and they want them now. Uh, and they, they wring their hands when they don't get them. Uh, and it's quite clear that the, that the stock market isn't exactly buying the story here. Your stock is down 12% uh, today. It's down 57% from the IPO, and the IPO uh, was downsized from the original and expectations here. What does the stock market have out for you all, number one? And number two, you say that you expect there will be a lot of consolidation in this mar market because it is over overpopulated. Will you be one of the sellers? Well, we, we certainly are sensitive uh, to earnings. Uh, I'm still a very large shareholder. I'm in it for the long haul. But the organization, the company is 11 and a half years old. So we're very, very young. And we've become the second largest retail lender now in the country. And we just improved it to 3.3% market share. So it gives you an idea how massively fragmented and how large this market is. And in addition, Tyler and Courtney, this market will be redefined. The total addressable market is no longer mortgage. The total addressable mortgage is homeowners, products, and services, and all the adjacencies that are mixed in. We are in the middle of disruption. So it's very, very early, and we continue to be very disciplined uh, towards our long-term goal. And we see that as a huge opportunity uh, going forward. As far as consolidation is concerned, keep in mind that non-banks now have over 65% market share, where previous cycles you've seen non-banks with only 40% or less market share. So non-bank is really starting to be uh, very relevant here. But out of that, that entire market share of 65%, it's very fragmented because coming out of the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, everyone was racing for a land grab, and that mm -hmm. is to build up capacity. But now the volumes are going the other direction. So now scale, brand, efficiency matters. And this pressure that you're talking about to earnings, that pressure is equal pain for everyone in the industry. For those that have efficiency, for those that have scale in a brand and can push down customer acquisition costs is gonna have an edge and ultimately will increase their market share. Mr. Shea, thank you very much for being here and taking our questions today. We appreciate it. Uh, you're stand-up guy and we uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome.